Hey uh, YouTube, welcome back to Clooney Garage, it's Fred here. It's another vlog! It's a Saturday, it's feeling like the first day of spring here at Clooney Garage. We're feeling pretty good. Don't need to get Grandad's blanket on, don't worry about that. Alright, so you've talk, heard me talk about sources of motivation and how to build race cars. And we'll talk a lot about what got us motivated to build this bad girl here. But the main thing we're going to talk about today is how we got to the snot box and how Frankie got his daily going. Stick with us, it's going to be a great episode. Check this out. Alright, it's always a pair of idiots here at Clooney Garage, and to help us in today's episode, here he is. No bananas in pyjamas, it's Grandad's Jumper Day. That's a surprise, not bloody cardigan, Frankie. But anyway, we'll get started, and we'll start talking about this bloke's previous street machines. Alright, Frankie, you've got to have a comeback after that cardigan comment, surely. Yeah, thanks, Fred. You always uh, build me up. But, oh, good. We're here today to talk about um, you know, what um, gets you motivated and where you end up uh, where we are today. And... Uh, yeah, I've uh, always been a Ford man, as you can see. I've even oh, got the yeah. jumper. We've even got the uh, little badge there. You bet. Nice one. And, uh, yeah, when I was 17, I saved up my, my pocket money and I bought my first car, which happened to be one of these bad girls. It was a um, XB coupe. Owned it for a lot of years. A few guys might remember my old orange uh, coupe. And uh, loved coupes. I owned quite a few of them, including a uh, an XA, a pepper red XA coupe. And um, um, I owned it most of my life. Um, also had a, an XY for a while and um, built a supercharged uh, you know, small block Cleveland for that and which went pretty well until I broke the, uh, the crank on it and uh, also a, a big block Ford 460 motor and which was a lot of fun but uh, yeah it's um, times have changed a little bit and we're, we're moving on to more modern cars and yeah. doing different things. Right. well before we start talking about the modern things let's look at a piece of automotive history or Frankie's big block. All right, let's go check out a bit of automotive uh, history here at Clooney Garage. Look at this. Oh, my God. Frankie, what are we looking at here? Well, this is um, off my old big block Ford motor. Nothing but the best in the day with uh, twin 750 uh, double pumper Ooh, follies on it geez. and uh, an SVO uh, tunnel ram manifold. Wow. Well, I can remember that sticking out the top of the XB and having uh, the boys in blue pull us over a couple of times. But anyway, that was good fun. At least it wasn't out Brad and doing uh, burnouts in the front of the roundabout there. So that was all good fun, wasn't it, Frankie? It was indeed. All right, let's keep going. All right, so now we've stepped back in time. Let's come out a little bit further in time. And uh, so, Frankie, tell us that, you know, these these Ford guys that turn to the... Uh, the, the line doesn't always end well, does it? Yes, the dark side can bite people. And uh, in the clip here is uh, poor old Alan Moffat uh, driving a 05 Commodore and uh, it's uh, coming off second best in practice at Bathurst. Oh, geez. Which uh, was very embarrassing for him. And uh, I'm trying not to repeat that sort of uh, scenario. No, well, remind me not to let you drive Clooney at uh, Wakefield, Frankie. So uh, we don't want to have a repeat of Skyline with Alan Moffat. So, Frankie, what made you see the light? <laughs> the light. Oh Frankie it's good to hear and I've got a little caboodle here so um let's talk about that car because what you saw at the end of that clip there was something that was the end product the wild bit of kit so Frankie take us through it what how did it start off life and what was it? Yeah a friend of ours uh old mate he's uh offshore he bought himself a uh a VF series one yep. plain Jane SS uh Commodore and uh did what we all do put a uh, big bore exhaust a DeFilippo exhaust on it and uh, drove around for a little bit. Yeah. But then, of course, you need more. I, ca I can't imagine that the uh, the standard six litre would be enough for offshore. No, no, he's not that sort of guy. No. So uh, <laughs> he bought a, um, a crate motor LSA oh, from yeah. uh, Hallmark and uh, and popped that in. And uh, fairly handy. Mm. Uh, he put a, popped a little bit more boost out of it and uh, it was pumping out about 450 rear wheel kilowatts. Just 98? On pump fuel, that's right, yeah. yeah. Oh, geez. Well, I mean, 450 kilos, that's a handy bit of kit. Like. It, it was a handful, but uh, not enough. Not enough. Well, oh, that's a similar story here, but uh, what, what what do you do next? Reminds me of another bloke I know. Oh, go but, uh, Yeah, he got himself a, uh, a Lingenfelter, uh, I think it's called the GT9 yep. can. Uh, 
early camshaft. I, I was, loved the cam idle and, and the way that car sounded, certainly barked. Yep. Um, that wasn't enough, so we bought some uh, mast heads and uh, it was very handy. We put it on the E85 and had an interchiller of all oh, things. I, mean, I, I hear that they're, uh, they're known for massive horsepower gains, Frankie. Exactly, that's what he experienced, and uh, about 555 rear wheel kilowatts was still fairly handy for a street registered mm. legal car. Yeah, and uh, of well, course, he, he did some other modifications too. Yes, well, I know, I know he likes um, cats as we all do in the exhaust system side of things, but that's all good. But um, you and I took that car for a drive, Frankie, and um, I, I think I had needed to change my underwear after that drive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and um. You decided to make some changes yourself under the bonnet of uh, Clooney at that point. I did, and uh, let's talk all about that in a second. But first of all, let's show you some more clips of this wild LSA Commodore. <laughs> He uh, made some modifications to get it uh, down on the road, which um, included some um, massive forged line wheels, which uh, aren't cheap, they tell me. No, I, th I heard he was one of Harrop's best customers at the time. Yes, bought the um, Harrop big brake kits yeah. as well, and uh, some uh, KW shock absorbers, coilovers, yeah. and uh, it was a very handy, very nice package indeed. Well, I know a lot of people that use Harrop ultimate brakes to go get do the shopping, so that's good. Yes, yeah. he certainly got the most out of them. Yeah, no worries. So, um, the diff capabilities of these cars, 550 kilowatts, I tell you what, you're going to be breaking the normal LSDs. What did he go with? Did he go with a Harrop True Track to start with? And well, he, he proved that um, diff centers can fly, actually, <laughs> and um, that inspired him to go for a wave track. Right. And uh, it was a, a good example for us because then we know not to muck around with big horsepower. No. We don't have to uh, try some inferior products and go straight to the wave track, and that's what you've got included. Exactly. You know, the wave tracks are unbreakable. And I also heard that in the next Olympics, after this COVID situation, you know, moves on, that uh, Harrop True Track is going to be part of the shop put. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, and we know someone who might be a contender in that series. That's right. All right. So when it comes to a daily driver, Frankie, and making decisions going from a Ford, what was the next step for Mrs. Frankie? Well, um, I chose this car, and um, Mrs. Frankie always loved this car. Uh, I never liked this car. It's a Hoon's car, and so um, that's a bit rough. It's a Hoon's car. Jeez, I can't imagine why you've got deep dish Simmons on it, and um, you've obviously kept the stock exhaust. So I don't know why she'd think that. I know. So I'll let her choose her um, her own vehicle this time. Right. And uh, she ended up choosing a uh, a VE Commodore, and uh, I'll give you a bit of a rundown on on what that has. And uh, yes, it's uh, an interesting car, which. Um, sort of overshadowed my poor GT and put it in, oh. the, in the shade a little bit. Yeah. Well, I've seen this uh, this VE, and we're about to show you a clip of it too. 20,000 origin kilometres, an original non-Sydney car, and I tell you what, the owner, it was a credit to him. This particular VE Commodore is owned by Mrs. Frankie. It's not a bad little example, black on black, and uh, it's fitted with a uh, an LS7 T7 engine. Unfortunately, it came with um, AFM displacement on demand uh, technology, which means, of course, it had DUD lifters. Uh, they've been replaced, and uh, with that, uh, the eagle eyed viewers would see that it's also had a cam replacement, which is a VCM3 camshaft. Pumps out a little over uh, 300 kilowatts, which is more than enough for Mrs. Frankie. Unfortunately, this car is fitted with a uh, automatic gearbox. It's uh, designed for simpleton, so you just put it in D for drag or R for race, depending on which direction you want to go, and uh, plant the foot. Uh, Mrs. Frankie doesn't mind that. She's a left foot breaker anyway, so uh, she's got one for every pedal. And, uh, what's not to like about this engine? It's like a Stroker 366 Windsor, all aluminium block and heads. So, uh, yeah, for a V8 guy, I love it. All right, so you've heard Frankie's uh, missus's car. It's a healthy bit of kit, that one. So then when we had a decision to get our track car, um, in addition to Clooney, and um, I think you've heard about us with the hailstorms and the luck we had, um, Frankie, tell us why we decided on the VE platform and, um, and the LS motor. Well, as much as I love the Ford, you know, you've got to be realistic and uh, 
I, I'm a V8 man at heart, so uh, a, a good package is that little you know, LS motor. It's all aluminium and, uh, and it's not as big and, and tall as the uh, Ford Modular or Coyote motor. So this is this is not a bad option for us. And, yeah, uh, right. Well, let's pop the hood on this thing. For the, those of you that have seen it, it's um, they're a nice little package, these LS motors. Um, we've got ourselves a custom tune. We've got um, X-Force headers on it. Um, we've done the OTR ourselves. Um, we've done a bunch of other little things too. But um, Frankie's now got the catch can connected to it. That's a good job there, Frankie. Um, but I'll tell you what, she's not going too bad, this little LS motor. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Um, you know, and to pump out 280 kilowatts of the rear wheels, that's that's not bad at all for 150,000 Ks. What do you reckon, Frankie? Well, it doesn't owe us a lot of money, and uh, after all, it's a Holden, it's just holding together, so you know, <laughs> we can have our fun on the track, and if something happens to it, oh, it's, it's no loss, is it? No, that's no loss, and I'm just going to make sure he doesn't have a snake there. No, he doesn't. He's renowned for getting snakes, that dog. Okay, so on that note, hope you enjoyed the little clips we brought you today, something a little bit different. Um, got a few more things coming up here on Clooney Garage because um, we have just solved this, haven't we, Frankie? It's a shame. It's a dying shame, but you know what? It's got to go, and uh, that means more goodies for this thing here. On that note, don't do it for Dale, do it for Brocky. Catch you later.